Welcome to Pure Mind Magic, the show to evolve your mind. Our mind is the most powerful thing we have, but no one teaches us how to use it. When we find out how, we're ready to create magic in life and in business. Learn real mindset secrets from brilliant minds around the world to change your mindset and income level forever. With every decision you make, you create your future. What is your next move? Now, welcome your host. Host, international magician, speaker, and podcast performance consultant, Jennifer S. Royal. Hi, this is Jennifer, and thanks for tuning in today. I have prepared a special, interesting interview for you today. So we will talk all about voice because I have a voice coach and speech coach. On the show. Her name is Cynthia Chai. She's from Singapore but travels all around the world to help people develop their voice and the power of their voice, especially CEOs and people that have to say important things. Also, podcasters, obviously. So, Cynthia is explaining why we can influence through voice and how we can do that. And she's also diving into the physical aspects of voice and sound because we are creating frequency with that. So, you are sending out vibrations. She's fantastic with all of that and explains exactly why voice is so powerful and why it has this huge potential to really influence people on a deep level. So she will reveal a couple of her secrets and she also wrote a book about it, what I can highly recommend. I have it on my desk. So all about voice today and what you can take away because you know audiobooks for example are very popular and this is something where voice is required and also when you look around on the internet so the demand for voice over recording really kind of explodes what I saw. So before you learn all the voice secrets and how you can use your voice to influence other people I wanted to mention maybe you are interested in podcasting in general and because podcasting is a hot topic at the moment because so many people are searching for how to launch a podcast. I do have created a book around that. It's a short read. It's very entertaining and it tells you everything about podcasting because it has a title How Podcasting Can Change Your Life, Unleash Endless Possibilities. I'm diving in everything that you need to know to get started in podcasting and it lays out all the possibilities and opportunities a podcast can create for you, including doing interviews. I'm happy when you check it out. It's on Amazon. You can get it worldwide, either in paper form or on your Kindle, whatever you prefer. The link for this is directly in the show notes below this episode. And now let's go ahead and let's start to discover the potential of our voice from a real voice coach. Here is for you, Cynthia Chai. Hi, Cynthia. Welcome to Pure Mind Magic. Hi, I am so glad to be on this show. I'm happy that we could make it up and I got your book and we have so much interesting things to talk about today. This is a podcast and we are talking about voice, the potential in your voice and how to influence people with your voice. And Cynthia, you are the real expert when it comes to voice training and voice coaching and also coaching people to speak. But mm -hmm. I think it's best you go first, introduce yourself to our audience please. Okay, sure. So when people ask me what I do, I usually say that I change your voice. And then they'll ask me, oh, how do you do that? And what I really do is to help people develop the powerful voice that they have inside of them. And by powerful voice here, we're saying is the literal physical voice that we're developing to make the voice sound stronger, uh, more powerful, fuller, so that they can project more authority, more confidence, 
And when they are speaking, be it in meetings or presentations, they can be heard and be respected and be re recognized as the expert in their field. That's great. And it is really like that our voice has so much potential. And in your book, you are describing that the voice actually reveals the personality of a person. Why is that the case? Uh, yes. So our voice, you know, is our another unique identity. It's like our fingerprint. So it is very unique to everyone. Even though there are some people, they can mimic other celebrities' voice, but that's not them. And uh, even though they are mimicking, but you can still hear the subtle difference because our voice is very much uh, related to our own body build, to our own tension, to our own stress. And those stress is very individual. Everyone's stress will be different. And all those nuances form the unique quality of our own voice. So that's why that when we are hearing the voice, we can hear the physical state, whether they are well or not well. We can f hear their mental state, whether they're relaxed, they are tense, they are calm, and their emotional state, and so much more that we can hear from a person's voice. Yeah, that is so interesting. And I was really reflecting on that when I was reading this in your book and also in <laughs> your book with the title Influence Through Voice, Harness the Power yes. of Your Voice to Gain Respect, Establish Authority and Leave an Impact. You mm -hmm. are mentioning the physical aspect of the voice as well, what I was thinking about, because it has to do with vibrations. And I'm yes. really a big fan of everything that has to do with, with uh, frequencies, because this leads us into the field of quantum physics. So mm -hmm. Can you describe a little bit where there is the connection between vibration and our voice? Mm, okay. So in the core, the nature of our voice is vibration. How is the voice being produced? It's because that the air, our breath, is bypassing the vocal cords. And when the air is bypassing the vocal cords, that's where the air will make the vocal cords vibrate. And that's the source of our voice which is vibration. And uh, the vibration on the vocal cords is actually very weak. That's what happens when we are whispering. When we are whispering, it's only the vocal cords vibrating. And the reason people can hear us is because we have all these cavities in our body. They work as amplifiers. So they amplify the vibration on the vocal cords by means of supplementary vibration, which is also called resonance. So you see, there is initial vibration, there is supplementary vibration. So it's all about vibration. Voice itself is vibration. And uh, your voice is your unique identity. So the vibration you send out is different from everyone else. And that's why every one of us, we have a frequency as well, this voice frequency. And sometimes when we hear one person's voice, we feel, ah, that's very comfortable. Because that frequency makes you feel comfortable. That's vibrational frequency. And sometimes we meet someone, we say, ah, I don't like this person. And sometimes we didn't, we didn't even know why we didn't like that person. And sometimes it's because of the vibrational frequency from their voice that sends out. Mm, that is so interesting, Cynthia. Yeah. Nowadays, you train people all around the world, teaching them how to speak, how to step up, how to influence and be an authority in their field. But mm -hmm. it always hasn't been that way. Can you share a little bit of your backstory? What brought you to this very moment? Sure. Yeah, so I, when I was young, I was in singing. I was performing and... Uh, in college, I was also in the school radio station, but that's, that was how I was uh, kind of getting in touch with the voice. But I never thought that I would do something using voice as a career. And I, like many other people, I joined the workforce. And uh, in the workforce, um, my last job was doing in-house training, training in our own employees on communication. So that's where... Um, a lot of people were asking me, oh, how do we develop our voice to be more effective? And so that actually made me realize, oh, this is something that people are looking for. And at the same time, 
in the process, when I joined the workforce, unconsciously, I was also doing all kinds of things to make myself get hurt because I was, and, and I still am, I am an introvert, but now I'm a happy and outgoing introvert. <laughs> and uh, when I started, just joined the workforce, I was just a pure introvert. So in meetings, I seldom spoke up. And uh, they were also, over time, people, my colleagues, they started to see me. My default presence was not talking, not speaking. And there was one time, there was a guy, he was uh, a colleague. He told me, he said, uh, later on, we are going to have a meeting with another department. Can you let me talk? And at the time, when I heard that, I was thinking, who the hell do you think you are? And you are the one to tell me to shut up. But I, I didn't confront him. And I was just saying that, oh, okay. But after that meeting, I was so angry and frustrated. So that's where I started to learn how to speak up, how to develop my own both inner and outer voice. And I learned with many teachers, uh, many teachers on self-development, many teachers, including voice actors, and to learn how to really develop my own strong and powerful voice so that I can be heard. So over time, that because I was developing that, people started to noticing the way I sound. And that's why that I hear a lot of, I heard a lot of people asking me, oh, Cynthia, how do I develop a voice that uh, is stronger? Some said, how do I develop a voice that sounds like yours? So that's where it made me realize that, oh, this is something that not only people are looking for, but also that from my experience, this is something that I can teach them. So that's how I started. That's a great story and a really interesting way and approach you took to the whole topic. Yeah. So what would you say from your standpoint as an expert, why are audiobooks and podcasts so powerful? Yeah, because one is that, you know, nowadays we are we are kind of being dis uh, distracted by so many things. And uh, this is actually, in a way, it's a good thing because now people are doing something at the same time. They can just plug in their earphone or Bluetooth earphone and listen to podcasts when they are doing all kinds of uh, chores, like when they are brushing their teeth. So some of my clients, they told me when they are brushing their teeth, they listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. And when they are driving, they listen to podcasts. So I think... It is a very easy avenue for us to learn and to hear different kind of uh, different kind of views because it's very easy to access to. And that's why I find that now more and more podcast stations are coming up. I just uh, attended a conference last week and there was a, a guy who is uh, also doing podcasts. He said, I forgot, uh, was it every week? Uh, It's either every week or every month. They are at least about 10,000 new uh, podcasts coming up. I suppose he is saying about the episodes, 10,000 episodes every week. That's almost. So you can see that how powerful that podcasts are right now. That's true. And it's really hot at the moment, what everyone is yeah. saying. But when we look now at audiobooks and podcasts compared to books, why do you think this audio version of content is even stronger than just reading text on a paper or uh, on a screen? Yeah. Um, I think one is because when we are listening to something that we are, we are not uh, spending time, spending extra time, to do something, we are receiving uh, content. Uh, well, we are as if that were, as if we are doing something else. We are receiving them. And as a consumer of podcasts or audiobooks myself, for me, I know that when I'm listening to the podcast or uh, audiobooks, I can do something else. <laughs> I can do multitask. <laughs> And uh, the other one is some people, some of my clients, they were also saying, they said that I prefer audiobooks instead of a book. It's because that um, 
they so called they don't have time to read a book, but they can listen to a book at any time. Uh, the other one is, um, I I feel that nowadays we are also kind of read less and less. I forgot the the research, but they were saying that people now are reading much less book. Well, the audiobook provides another avenue for us to uh, learn, and also for those people who don't like to read books, to also listen to books. So I think that's probably why that it is so powerful now for audiobooks and podcasts. Very good point. And most people like it when they are told in a nice way. So this is、mm. where you come into play. Let's make you reveal some of your secrets, Cynthia. Sure. <laughs> I guess <laughs> you know that most people don't really like their own voice, and it's so interesting、yeah. when they listen to their own voice on on tape or on a recording. They just hate it because they are not、yeah. used to listen to it and to, to hear it from the other perspective than just、mm -hmm. talking and listening to it at the same time. Yeah. What are the best expert tips to make your own voice sound better? Yeah. So the first thing is, the listeners want to know that the best voice comes from the most relaxed body. So instead of getting so tensed up, getting so、uh, nervous about their voices, the first thing actually before they do their voices, project their voices. Do their、uh, podcast or interviews is relax. The more relaxed they are, the better the voice will be. That makes sense. Can you share some more tips? Yes. So, for example, one thing I ask my clients to do is we make a sigh. It's just like. <sighs> so you see, when we are doing the sigh just now, I was sighing with a light sound like. Ah, the sound itself is much more relaxed, so that will help them to get ready and also to get a sense of how the voice should be when they are speaking, which is relaxed. That will be the first.、Uh, that will be the first and critical step.、Mm -hmm. And then, of course, that in order to have a good voice. They also need to、uh, work on a step-by-step -step process because when we are working on the voice, it is not just to manipulate the voice to sound in certain way. Instead, we are developing the body. So I always tell my clients and students that voice is a very physical process because it's vibration. So we are working to optimize the vibration, and in order to optimize the vibration, what we do is relaxation is the first critical step, and then after that. In order to optimize it, we need to、um, break the old habit and wrong pattern of breathing. So we need to develop the proper breathing, because breath is what made the vocal cords vibrate in the first place. So the next step is that they need to develop their proper breath,、uh, because about ninety at least ninety percent of the population are breathing in the wrong way for almost their entire life.、Mm -hmm. So that's the next thing they do to develop the proper way of breathing. When they develop the proper way of breathing, that's where they will start to find. Oh, now I know how to relax, and I can really relax when I'm speaking. And the next two step is they are going to、uh, shift the projection,、uh, so called shift the projection from the so called throat, because most people's voice. Will be sounding like this. It's a little bit thin. It's a little bit higher in terms of the pitch.、Uh, that's because that the voice is only and mainly projecting from the throat. And so, what I do with my clients in the next two steps is to shift the projection from the throat area to the body. So when they can do that, their voice will sound much more relaxed, stronger,、um, and also fuller. In a way, it projects more authority and credibility. So、Very、that's the,、tip. yeah, that's the in a nutshell the entire voice development process. <laughs> that's amazing. 
And we all yeah. know that we can train our bodies through workouts. We can also train our mind on, on concentration and being more focused. Mm -hmm. What would a voice workout or voice training look like? Mm, okay. So the voice training, one is, uh, as I just shared with the listeners, that is to sigh. So in my uh, process with my clients, I require them to sigh a lot. So we do a lot of, <sighs> and that's one that we do. And then the next one we do is breathing. So we are breathing properly. The breathing properly is that when we breathe in, our stomach should come out. When we breathe out, the stomach should go in. So we do a few exercises to help them to correct that breathing because most people's breathing is the opposite. And there are a few ways that we do that. And one of them that I gave it a name and uh, the name of the breathing exercise is called Kung Fu breathing. <laughs> so, you know, the Kung Fu, uh, when people are practicing Kung Fu, it's like, ah, oh, uh, instead of, ah. Oh. And so when we are doing that, the Kung Fu breathing is, so this is going to be a little bit challenging um, through audio because they couldn't see me. But what we do is, Uh, let me demonstrate first, and hopefully that you can hear some of the sound. So you see, is what I do is, <sighs> you hear three sounds, uh, three times of the sound coming out. Uh, that is the breathing out. That is like the Kung Fu. By the same time, what we do is to push the stomach in. Uh, is <sighs> Push the stomach in, at the same time, air comes out. And then next is an automatic inhale because you have squeezed out all the air in, inside of your body. So you will have an automatic inhaling. And that's how we do the Kung Fu breathing. The purpose for the Kung Fu breathing is to retrain your body, uh, your body movement, because most of the times your body movement is exactly the opposite. So it will need a step-by-step -step process to help you retrain your body to move in the right way. So that's um, one of the exercises that we do in breathing and also to make your breathing a habit. I guess that helps a lot when it really becomes a habit, like uh, on autopilot almost. Mm. Yes, yes. So some of my clients, when they came to me, uh, just now you were talking about stage as well, uh, Before we, I think before we started. So... When my clients, they do a presentation in front of a group, group of people, they will say that, oh, I am very nervous. My voice will tremble. And then once they learn the proper breathing, they said, now uh, let me try proper breathing. But that is not working. The reason is because when you're nervous, you are, trying, you are trying to breathe properly. It's not going to happen. The body is too tense. And only when it becomes a habit, then when you stand in front of a group, you will be able to use the breath to manage your nervousness and your voice. So that's right. Only when it becomes a habit, then you will feel the power. That's great. So you say, in other words, there is a direct relation between developing your voice and the level of confidence you have on stage? Mm, yes, yes. Because, uh, you know, just now you were talking about we developing our body, we develop our mind. Um, it's the same as the voice. Voice is very physical. So this you may know that body and the mind, they are interacting with each other at all times. And sometimes when we want to become more confident, we develop our mindset about ourselves, right? So we develop our beliefs about ourselves. And then now in our mind that we are more confident. When we feel more confident mentally, we can speak with a more confident voice. That is the mind affecting the body approach. Well, the other way around can also work, which is when we work on the body, it will also affect how you feel about yourself, which is the mind. So when we work on the voice, it is to work on the body. When we change the body, change your vibration, it will change how you feel about yourself which is your mind. Very interesting relationship and looks yeah. like we can approach it from different angles and then mm -hmm. 
create this ripple effect. So like when we change one system, it affects the other system in a good way and we can enhance the whole thing and put it to a new level. Yes. Let's see if I can make you reveal even more secrets, Cynthia. <laughs> sure. I'm, sh I'm sure the listeners are really interested because your amazing book has this title, Influence Through Voice. What mm -hmm. would you say are the three best tips to actually influence with the voice? Uh, yes. One is, as you mentioned, that the best voice comes from the most relaxed body. If you want to use your voice to influence people, the first thing is that you must relax. Only when you are relaxing, then things will flow. So that's the first tech, first a big secret. And then the second one is if you want to influence people, it is not something that you go and try harder to make it happen. Instead, uh, it is uh, also very much like developing the voice, physical voice itself. So one is the voice uh, is required the body is to be relaxed. The second one is the best voice also comes from letting go, uh, letting go instead of uh, including letting go of the breath. Because if you want to influence people, letting go of the breath at the same time, it'll also helping, helping you letting go of your mind that is trying to control the result. And how do we let go of the breath? Which is, when you are speaking, you see, when people are nervous or when people are trying to control something, what happens is they will notice when they are speaking, they tend to hold their breath. And when they are holding their breath, this is how they sound like. Can you hear the difference? Mm. Uh, so that's how you sound like when you are holding your breath and speaking. So the second one is if you want to influence people, you have to let go of your breath. That will also result in letting go of your mind, trying to control the result. And this is actually a very common mistake that most of my clients make. Almost, almost 10 out of 10 will notice themselves at times holding their breath and speak. So if you're mm -hmm. holding your breath and Uh, if you're holding your breath and speak, your voice will now sound relaxed. And also, you sound that you're holding something. You're not sounding open and generous. If you're not open and generous, you're not able to influence people. So that's uh, the second uh, secret. When you're speaking, let go of the breath. Uh, don't hold the breath. And the third secret It is uh, to influence people. Uh, you may have heard this. It is to be authentic, be you. Now, here we are going to talk about how do you become more authentic through your physical voice. So when we are talking about influence uh, through authenticity, which in terms of the voice is that uh, the mistake some of my clients make would be, oh, now... I know in order to influence people, I need to uh, have up and downs in my voice. I need to have rhythm. I need to have melody. Again, they will make the mistake of trying to control the result, which is now I'm going to go high. Now I'm going to go low so that I can influence. But if you are speaking in that way, would you feel very comfortable? Probably not. You are feeling uh, too mechanical. You are feeling weird. Uh, some of my clients told me that They said, even myself, I feel weird. Uh, if you feel weird, other people, whoever is listening to you, they will feel weird. They, they can see that. They can hear that. So we need to be authentic in the voice. And how to be authentic in the voice is not by changing your pitch, your tone at all times. Instead, we feel what we say. When you feel what you say, then whatever you're saying, the pitch, the tone will be changed by itself. You will have melody. You will have rhythm. It is go in to find how you feel about what you are talking about. So that's my three secrets to influence the voice. Super interesting. And I guess that can help a lot of podcasters and YouTubers and also people that hold presentations on stage and speak from the stage 
So the next mm -hmm. question would be, how can a training of our voice really help to establish one as the authority and go-to person? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's also quite similar uh, to what we just shared. Uh, but the first thing is, if you want to become the authority through your voice, number one and foremost is that you are really knowing what you are talking about or doing. So you are really uh, the expert in your field. So in terms of knowledge, in terms of uh, all kinds of uh, expertise, that first you need to have the expertise. Then we can talk about how you can use your voice to reflect that. Because that's the problem for most of my clients, that they are the expert. They have been in their industry for years. They have the experience. But the problem is that their voice is not reflecting that. So again, we go back to the voice development process. Uh, one is that we need to develop a voice that really projects you as the authority. And to do that, one is that we develop the voice quality to be fuller. And to f develop the voice to be fuller is the process we just shared, like We need to uh, develop relaxation. We need to develop the proper breathing. We need to shift your projection from the throat to the body. When you are doing that, it is a process of developing you as well, developing you to be more authentic, developing you to be more aligned, more aligned in terms of inside out, more aligned inside of your own body vibrationally. So when you develop that, develop your full voice, It is a process of self-development. You feel, uh, once you develop the full voice, you feel, ah, now I feel very confident. And some of my clients, when they found their own full voice, they said, I don't know why, I just feel good. <laughs> so, because your own vibration has changed, your frequency has changed, you are more aligned. So you have the expertise, now we are making it aligned. So then you will sound like an expert that you are already are, uh, that you already are. So that's, uh, that's one key area, developing the full voice. The other one is what we mentioned, that is to feel what you say. Uh, mm -hmm. Not just talking intellectually, but also when you are speaking, you need to feel what you are saying. Because emotion is what makes people take action. Logic is not is not the final say in taking the decision, uh, taking action. So the other one is to feel what you say. Very good tip. Mm. Would you say that by training the voice that people also can find their voice in terms of finding their true purpose? Mm -hmm. uh, This um, may not help them to find, may not help everyone. Um, what voice will do is to help people feel more aligned uh, in terms of the expertise that they already have, but may not help them finding, for example, the passion for their life. Uh, because finding our passion for our life will also require other uh, training that help them okay yeah i see mm. but maybe we can say that it, it could be a part like when you have to deal a lot with your voice and uh, mm. getting visible so i mean in this process that mm -hmm. the voice really plays an important role here yes yes so if you want to get visible then you you must you must learn how to develop your voice because if you want to be visible, you need to be out there and speaking. You need to be there. The speaking can be one person, can be 100 people. But even if you're speaking to one person, you need to project that authority that you are the expert. You need to project the confidence. So yes, if you want to be visible, voice is a very important element that you need to develop. 
That was really helpful. And Cynthia, let's talk a little bit about the resources listeners can get if they mm. are interested to get really into voice training and working with you. So mm -hmm. I mentioned your book, Influence Through Voice. Where yes. can the listeners find it? Ah, uh, Okay. So I would uh, recommend them to go to Amazon to find the book because on Amazon there is... Um, Kindle version as well. And uh, so on my website, one is that the publisher is not doing the uh, republishing uh, anymore. So the best way is to get it on Amazon. <laughs> so the publisher is not republishing. That means that I don't have any stock. <laughs> But the good th news is that I am doing the uh, audio version of the book. So the audio version of the book uh, should be done in March. So that they can keep an eye on my website if they want to get an audio version. And uh, my website, uh, I think you probably would uh, put it in the uh, show notes, mm -hmm. but I'll say it, which is uh, PowerfulExecutiveVoice.com. That's a really cool name for a website. And <laughs> yes, it will be in the show notes. Mm. So this is branding already with your website. And mm -hmm. Cynthia, you also mentioned before we started recording that you do have yes. a special gift for my listeners here, a three-part video series to mm. learn even more about the power and potential of the human voice and your yes. work. So yes. maybe can you share some insights on that and And where can people pick up this gift? Mm, sure. So this is a three-part uh, video series. And in this three-part, uh, I am taking them step-by-step step on how uh, where to develop your potential in your voice so that you can sound powerful. And also, they are going to find out uh, what is the number one thing to develop a powerful voice. And it is not breathing. Uh, so they are going to find out in the three-part video series, what is the number one thing to develop a powerful voice? And at the same time, they are also going to find out um, what we just shared, which is why working on your tone, working on your uh, pitch will not help you sound influential. Uh, instead, we are talking about the other approach, which is to feel what you say. So that's uh, also they are going to find out how to feel what they say in this three-part video series. So by learning about these three uh, video series, they will find out the secrets, the step-by-step -step system to help them develop a powerful voice so that they can be heard and be recognized as the expert. And uh, they can find it at uh, uh, bit.ly, which is B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash voice crash course. Very nice. So thanks for sharing that. This will mm, sure. also be in the show notes, of course. Mm -hmm. And one of my last questions for today, Cynthia, is do you have another book recommendation concerning voice communication, voice training besides your book for people mm. that are really interested in diving deep and learning more? Yes, yes. So there are quite a few books. Uh, one of the things, uh, one of the things just now we we're talking about is body affecting the mind, right? So voice is body. Working on the voice will affect your mind. So there was a TED talk which is talking about the power pose. Uh, not sure if you have seen that. So which is also the body uh, affecting the mind approach. So when you are assuming, so for example, the Wonder Woman pose, the Wonder Woman pose. When you are in that pose for two seconds, the research showed that your hormone will be changed, hormone levels. Your testosterone, which is the confidence hormone, will increase. The stress hormone, which is cortisol, will reduce. So that uh, speaker on TED, uh, so one is they can check out that TED talk, which is called Power Pose. The other one is they can also check out the book that author wrote. Uh, so that author is Amy Cuddy. Uh, Cuddy is C-U-D-D-Y. Her book is called Presence. So that's uh, one book. Uh, the other book is uh, by Patsy Roddenberg. Uh, Patsy Roddenberg is a, a UK-based, a British, uh, also a teacher on voice acting and theater. 
So she wrote a few books. They are all quite good. There was one book is also oh, there was one book. It's also called Presence. So that's one of her book.、Uh, the other book is also written by her. is called the I forgot. Was it the Second Circle or First Circle? So they can Google whether it's the sur- Second Circle. I believe it's the Second Circle. I read that book quite a few years ago. So it is also talking about how do we communicate. When we are communicating with people, how do we convey the confidence, convey the authority that we are the expert, without、uh, getting too much or getting too、uh, hidden or getting too invisible? Perfect. That are really great tips on learning <laughs> even more how to use your voice to actually influence people and get them to what you like. Mm-hmm. Cynthia, I would love to leave the last episodes of、uh, the other way around, like the last words of this episode, up to you.、Mm-hmm. So, anything you would like to share about the power of the human voice, maybe your favorite quote or any additional advice you picked up or. Got from a mentor, but before you do,、mm. I wanted to say thank you for coming on the show today. It was really great to have you as my guest, as the voice expert, talking about voice and voice training. So thanks for being my guest. I'm looking forward、sure. to stay in touch, and also, you know, you are on my list to meet you in person at one of your、yeah. events worldwide. So I'm sure I will make、mm-hmm. this happen this year.、Yes. But、mm-hmm. now the stage is yours. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sure. So first, I'd like to thank you for having me on the show, and it has been really great talking to you. And、uh, yeah, so my quote about the voice is:、uh, "The voice is the window to the human soul." And it is a quote by Henry Wordsworth Longfellow. And it is so true about that because our voice is the window to your soul. And when you want to have a more powerful voice, there is potential in your voice, and it is something that you can develop. And when you develop that, we will see more the shining parts are the shining parts of your soul. We will see more of you shining. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you feel ready to shine now after listening to this interview with Cynthia Chai. Make sure to check out her book to really get into the field of developing your voice to influence others. Also, remember you can grab a copy of my podcasting book today from Amazon: How Podcasting Can Change Your Life, and then maybe you combine it with podcasting and your voice to create a strong impact. On the world with your message. All you need to know is in the show notes. Just click on the links, and you are ready to go. I wish you a fantastic time now. Talk to you soon. Until then, create some magic.